You've very likely heard of the genome editing tool CRISPR-Cas9, all about making a cut in a specific part of the genome. But that's just the start of CRISPR. Over time, we've been able to recognize more and more families of CRISPR, and one of those is CRISPR-Cas13. Today, you're going to learn all about its high potential, especially in the crisis we're facing now with COVID-19. A huge problem is the decrease and lack of testing kits. But that's not really the problem. See, if we introduce more materials, it just only adds on to the wait time. What we really have to do is create a fast and efficient way to tell if somebody has COVID-19 or not. And that's exactly what CRISPR-Cas13 is doing. And there's more. Cas13 is a protein which has two HEPN domains. These domains exhibit RNase activity. RNase simply stands for ribonuclease, proteins that are great at speeding up the process of breaking down RNA. And that's one of the key differences between Cas9 and Cas13. Cas13 has this HEPN domain, which specifically cuts RNA, whereas Cas9 cuts DNA. Along with the Cas13 protein, there's a guide RNA, which is made up of cRNA or CRISPR RNA. This is the specific sequence that we want to locate in the genome. The final big difference with Cas13 is instead of looking for a PAM, it looks for a protospacer flanking site and sometimes doesn't even need it to latch onto its target. This means that we're not restricted by PAMs or PFS. By the way, a PAM or PFS would be a simple sequence before the target sequence that we're trying to locate in the genome. If it didn't have that sequence, then we wouldn't be able to actually make the cut. Okay, so instead of cutting the large amounts of DNA that we have that really control how our body functions, we're cutting RNA instead? What's really so important about this? Okay, okay, you got me, you're right. See, Cas13 has a special property of collateral cleaving, meaning once it's found its target, it will start cutting things automatically. Anything that runs into it is cut in half. You can think of it as an original scissors with a specific shape that once it cuts a certain target, turns into a complete paper shredder, shredding away anything that binds to it. Now that you know the basics, here are three cool things happening with Cas13 right now. The first is RNA knockout. Cas13 just specifically finds a certain target site and makes multiple cuts along the RNA. This often leads to the RNA not being able to function anymore and we're able to understand the function of that protein. Once we see it leave the body, we can really understand what it's actually doing. Plus, if there's any dysfunctional RNAs or just RNAs that are causing harm, we can cut them right out. The second idea is DCAS13 or a dead version of Cas13 where both HEPN domains are edited. So essentially they just can't cut RNA anymore. That, that sounds so useless, a dead Cas13. Despite not being able to cut, DCAS13 can still locate a specific part in the genome. We can add different proteins and domains to DCAS13 so they carry out certain functions when binded to RNA. One really cool domain is a DAR, which looks through a specific target sequence and is able to convert a letter A, base pair A, to an I, which also represents a G. The one catch is the guide RNA cannot be completely complementary. It has to have one mismatch right by the A to G chain. There are many diseases caused by point mutations where we know one letter is incorrect and that if it was a different letter, it would be completely fine. For example, take sickle cell anemia or cystic fibrosis. This technology can literally cure some of those diseases. Yo, yo, oh my gosh, no way, look, it, it's Sherlock. Why, hello. No, not, not you, Sherlock. That Sherlock. That's right. It's time to get that old Sherlock out of here and bring in the new and improved Sherlock that can actually detect viral infections. Sherlock uses Cas13 and its ability to collateral cleave to its advantage. First, the guide RNA is designed based off a specific RNA sequence that we can find in COVID-19. Second, we combine that specific guide sequence with our Cas13. We also mix in the secret sauce of this whole technology, a reporter. The reporter is a simple RNA sequence with one end having a probe that wants to light up with a fluorescent light 
and the other hand having a quencher that's stopping that light from going off. We can then import the guide sequence, the cast 13 and the reporter into the human body and within minutes extract a saliva sample. If COVID-19 is present in the patient, then Cas13 would have binded to that RNA sequence. Also meaning it will go into Tasmanian devil mode, ripping apart any RNA that binds to it. And that's exactly why the reporters are there. If Cas13 has started shredding away RNA, it will start to shred reporters, meaning that the fluorescent light will be given off. When the reporter is cut, the probe will be released from the quencher, therefore being able to emit its fluorescent light. There are many ways to now go about at seeing the results. For example, one simply is as simple as a pregnancy test where you just dip a paper into the fluid extracted from the saliva and depending where marks lay out, you can tell if the patient has COVID-19 or not. No, 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 wait, you gotta save that for this part. That whole process can be done in your home with no expertise. It only costs $6. Results will take less than one hour to receive. And Sherlock has a 97% sensitivity rate and a 100% specificity rate. Now you have my permission to be mind blown. It's clear Cas13 is completely disrupting the field of genome editing. And given the situation with COVID-19, it really questions if we can push past the ethics that have been holding CRISPR back. In order to save lives, we're going to have to administer a new test and possibly introducing this genomic editing tool into the body may be a first step to push past some of the um, silly things that other people have, have done. Tools for assessing the presence of viral DNA is completely different than genetically engineering people, but it will definitely be a huge step for genomic engineering.